Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at the iPhone 12 and today I wanted to do a full review of this phone. Since this phone is becoming a very budget friendly device, I wanted to give you my honest opinion and review of this phone. I think this is one of the best budget friendly phones right now. So let's start with the outside. What we have here is a 6.1 inch screen and on the bottom we do have a couple speakers. We also have a lightning port for charging. Then on this side we have the power lock button and then and on this final side, we have that Apple's new switch, volume rockers, and then here we have the SIM card slot, no SD card expansion, so keep that in mind. We also have dual cameras with the flash. I decided to go with the black color. There was a few other options that I could have went with, but I usually, if I don't like the color, I usually stick with the black. Red one is my favorite color, but, but they didn't have it in the red one, so I went with the black. Uh, now, as you guys can see, the lenses aren't uh, to rise up on the back, which is pretty good, but I still recommend getting the case. Now let's check the rest of the phone. Let's talk about the display next. As I already mentioned, 6.1 inches, 25, 32 times 11, 70 pixels, 20 to 9 ratio, 457 pixels per inch. Uh, this is OLED display. I believe this is the first year Apple introduced the OLED display to the iPhones. I don't think iPhone 11 had the OLED. I believe that one still had LCD, but I could be wrong. But this one does have the OLED display. Uh, it has a pretty good screen to body ratio. Uh, there's a little bit of notch on top, but even the newer iPhones still have that notch so um, overall bezels aren't that big I mean overall it's mostly screen um, now this phone also has 1200 nits of brightness it also has HDR sport oleophobic coating scratch resistant glass ceramic shield ambient line sensor and the proximity sensor so it does have all the goodies on the front of the screen now when it comes to the display as you guys can see the screen looks gorgeous I mean right now I probably have it at um, what is this, like 30% brightness. Uh, this screen gets extremely bright. I can bump it up all the way, 1200 nits of brightness, and honestly, it looks like a flashlight. It's super bright. So most of the time, I just use it at 30, 40%, and it looks amazing. Now, when you go outside, I live in a place where it's sunny throughout the day, you know, for months, and the screen itself looks really, really good in a sunny weather. Nothing worse when you go outside and the sun is hitting the phone and you can't see anything. This one does a really good job in this sun. One of my favorite things about this phone is the actual display. It looks gorgeous. The colors pop. The brightness is very bright. Next, let's talk about the performance. This phone has Apple's A14 Bionic chip, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and then when it comes to the storage, it starts at 64 gigabytes, then it goes up 128, 256, and I believe 512 gigabytes as well. Uh, there's no SD card expansion, so make sure you think about that before getting it. For me personally, 64 gigabytes is enough. I can definitely play quite a few games. I can do some recordings, even 4K recordings, and all that stuff will fit on the phone. Now, if you do end up doing quite a lot of 4K recordings, then I would definitely recommend getting something higher than 64 gigabytes. Now, when it comes to the operating system updates, this phone does receive the latest updates. Now, this phone was released in the 2020, and I still have the iPhone XR that was released, I believe, in 2018, and that one still has all the latest updates. So this phone shall be getting at least, I would say, at least three to four more years of the latest updates. But even if those latest updates stop, you know, three, four years from now, you can still 100% use the phone. It won't affect anything. Now, when it comes to performance, this phone is very, very smooth. Now, when it comes to the battery life, this phone has 2850 million battery. It also supports Qi wireless charging and the MagSafe wireless charging. And the wireless is at 15 watts. I believe the wired is either 15 or 20 watts. Uh, now, when it comes to the cameras, um, this is pretty much the same as any of the other phones. They do update the sensor, but again, we have 12 megapixel on the front and then on the back we have dual cameras and again 12 megapixel main camera with the aperture of 1.6 and then we have secondary 12 megapixel ultra wide with the aperture of 2.4 
This, of course, records in the 4K videos at 60 frames per second. Then it records in the 1080p with the full HD 240 FPS. I did try both. I kind of concentrate before I was more of a 1080p kind of guy, but now I definitely record more in the 4K. And the quality is amazing. Um, in the beginning of the video, I said this phone is becoming much more budget friendly. And, you know, if you compare this phone to some of the Motorola or Samsung, those mid-range phones, on. This phone will outperform all of those with the camera, with the performance, with the screen. Um, maybe not the battery because it doesn't have large battery, but the battery works pretty good on this phone. Um, you know, I forgot to mention it, but when it comes to battery, I'm easily getting, I would say, day, day and a half, two days. It really depends what I'm doing. Now, if I'm doing a lot of 4K recordings, then yeah, that will drain battery quite a lot, especially if I'm doing three, four videos. Each one is seven, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, that definitely drains the battery. No matter which phone you have, 4K recordings do drain the battery. But if you're using it just for Facebook Messenger, browsing, YouTube, some games from time to time, you will get at least a day of battery life. But I'm, personally, I'm getting day and a half, sometimes even two days if I don't use it all day, all the time. Now, let's go back to the cameras. I did end up doing quite a lot of recordings, especially since I'm doing a lot of reviews. I do have quite a few other iPhones that I've used. Um, now, for example, I did have the iPhone 13 and also have the iPhone 11 and the 10 hours mentioned. I was comparing the quality of the pictures the pictures look amazing now this phone if i'm comparing it to for example iphone 14 yeah iphone 14 cameras are better but the differences aren't that huge overall cameras are really good especially the front camera for the selfie so if you like that kind of thing if you're doing a lot of social media you will definitely love the selfie camera on the front now one thing that i love about this phone it does have one physical sim card one e-sim you know with the newer iphones that stop doing the physical sim so i'm definitely gonna miss those i do like to switch them myself and all that so uh this is a good thing you know you have one physical sim and then you have one e-sim oh, so overall this has been amazing phone to use it's been so much fun it's been very very reliable and it's very simple to use i always, I always tell people whenever the iPhones become more budget friendly where you can compare it to some of the uh, mid-range even lower budget Android phone I would always recommend them go with the iPhones because you will get a premium camera uh, premium screen you will get premium performance and all that and there isn't one phone that you can put next to Android budget phone that's going to compete with all that overall really good phone and I would definitely recommend this thank you guys for watching have a great day